Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Um, I have done a couple things off camera since our last episode. The first thing is, is I have reverted back to owning this singularity system because I think I found a better way of granting the rest of this territory to the state of Panaxala without giving up my claim on the Elgate system. What I'm going to do instead of giving this away to them is I'm actually going to dismantle my starbase in the Benus system. The idea behind this is leaving it open, hopefully they will go ahead and construct a starbase of their own in this system, and then once it borders the other systems like Zandaban, I can start granting away the rest of the systems that I want to grant to them um, from there. So uh, once I unpause this, it will go ahead and hopefully update the borders. There we go. So now this is an unclaimed system and hopefully they will send over a science ship and a construction ship um, soon and claim this system. For the time being, I'm going to continue my science ship um, surveying these systems and my construction ship can go ahead and claim these systems. That'll make it easier to grant. Um, the second thing that I've done off camera is I have reconfigured our ship designs and our fleet designs. We recently researched battleships which kind of changes up how we want to conceptualize our fleets. We've also researched several new technologies like um, disruptors and auto cannons that I want to take advantage of. So um, if you're not interested in fleet design or ship design, I'll go ahead and put a timestamp on the screen right now so you can skip forward and enjoy the gameplay. But for those of you who are interested, I'm going to spend the next five minutes or so uh, briefly giving you uh, an explanation for some of my decisions. Now, I'm no expert in ship design, um, but I tried to create something that, to me, makes sense and seems well balanced, so you can let me know what you think. So we're looking at our template for our fleet right here. Um, we have 30 corvettes. Um, these are going to be uh, focused on hull and shields uh, with disruptors and auto cannons. Uh, we have 15 picket destroyers. These are going to be focused on uh, PD and um, also have auto cannons to deal with shields. So hopefully most of my small ships will be focused on shields and hull. Um, we have gunship cruisers and these are going to weigh heavily against armor and hull. Um, so while our smaller ships are uh, chipping away at uh, shields, our um, gunship cruisers will be dealing heavy damage against um, armor um, for small and medium sized ships. Um, our torpedo class cruisers will be targeting large ships with torpedoes and some missiles. And then of course we have battleships as the backbone of the fleet. As we up our uh, fleet capacity, I'd like to get an extra two battleships here, raise each of these to three battleships each. And then I'd like to flesh out my fleet with a few more cruisers as well. I think I'm happy with the number of corvettes and destroyers for now. Um, we can go into ship designer and I, I can show you my designs for each of these ships. Um, so Swarm is um, my Corvette class. They have Swarm computers. Um, they are all armor and they are equipped with auto cannons and disruptors. Um, again, really just want to focus on chipping away at the shields with the, the auto cannon and starting to deal damage directly to the hull with these disruptors because uh, enemy ships become less effective um, in proportion to the hull strength. So we're basically decreasing the effectiveness of the enemy um, fleet straight away with these disruptors. Um, destroyers are gonna be PD, so I have one flat cannon and two point defenses, um, as long, along with uh, auto cannons. Um, we can look at our gunship cruiser next. This is what's going to be targeting armor. So it's equipped with two plasma accelerators, medium size. So these have fairly high accuracy and um, okay tracking. So these should be able to target enemy corvettes, destroyers, and other cruisers as well um, and deal high enough damage. Um, they're not large weapons, so they're not going to be dealing massive damage. Uh, they might struggle a little bit against enemy corvettes. That might be one of our weaknesses in this fleet design, uh, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't think anything's going to be perfect. Um, so we've got plasma accelerators and then of course we've got lasers. Um, 
I might consider swapping these out for cavitation collapsers, but I think I want to save Archaeotech weapons for my battleships, just because um, the relic cost is going to be kind of high with these, and um, uh, battleships are probably the most likely ships to survive in combat since they stay at a great range and don't engage. Um, I chose the line computer for these ships. Um, this way they're going to advance to their median range, which should be 60, where all of these weapons can fire. Because uh, these coil guns have a range of 50, and the rest of these uh, guns have a range of 60. Um, so all the ship, all, uh, all uh, weapons should be engaged at the median range of 60 with the line computer. And um, instead of artillery computer, which tries to maintain that range, the line computer just advances to that range and stops. Even if the enemy comes closer, they just stay there. I'm happy with uh, our cruisers absorbing some hits because, well, cruisers are really tanky. Um, they have four armor and weapon slots, so they can take a lot of a beating, and uh, I think that's okay. Um, we have our torpedo cruisers. Uh, these are not changed too much from our previous torpedo design. Um, we got torpedoes, and then we have missiles um, to try to overwhelm enemy point defense systems. So any uh, PD might target these, you know, missiles instead of our precious torpedoes. Um, again, torpedo computer, not much has changed. Uh, finally, we can take a look at our battleships. Um, we have carriers. We have two of each type of battleships, and I'd like to get at least three kinetic artillery and energy artillery once we up our um, uh, naval capacity, or command limit, I think is the word, yeah. Um, so our um, carrier has uh, three um, hangar bays, and then the rest of these weapons are really to deal with any ships that might come close, but hopefully it never comes to it. They all have a range of 30. Um, the, P the PD does extra damage against uh, armor, and um, the auto cannons will deal damage against uh, shields. And additionally, we have on all of our battleships, we have equipped um, swarmer missiles to um, synergize with our torpedo cruisers to try to overwhelm enemy point defense. These things have a massive range, so they can fire from all the way back. So all of our battleships have this as their broadside stern. That way we can equip three utility uh, slots in here. The broadside stern gives us three instead of two. Um, so we can go ahead and look at kinetic artillery. Um, this is just all ancient macro batteries right now. I chose these over the regular kinetic um, weapons because we get the bonuses from the rubricator and from our ascension perk. So I think we got 33% from one and 15% from the other. So that should be a total of um, let's see, that's 48%? Yeah. Um, so 48% damage bonus is pretty huge. So I think using these Archaeotech weapons are going to be pretty good. And finally, our energy artillery. We're using plasma accelerators and these cavitation collapsers. Again, Archaeotech for the damage bonus. Um, yeah, and that's our ship design. Uh, these artillery uh, battleships have the artillery computer, so they're going to stay at maximum range and just stay there. Uh, where the carrier um, has a carrier computer. Same deal. Okay. That is enough about ship design. Let us go ahead and unpause the game and uh, see where we're going this episode. I'm gonna bump this up to fast speed and it looks like our fleets already have orders to go to um, ship stations so they can uh, reinforce. Once they get there, I'm gonna give them each the order to upgrade fleet first and then I'm gonna hit the reinforce fleet and hopefully we'll have enough alloys to do this. Um, we'll have to see. We can also probably move our transport army back to a central position. I think we'll move him to Sismok. I think we're gonna prepare for war with the Mythful Obliterators first, and then we'll turn our attention down south once we've handled this war. I think the um, having exterminators at our borders is not a comfortable arrangement. Purifiers, yeah. We don't really wanna have these at our border, so I'd rather carve out a new state up for the Republic out of Mythfell territory and then turn our attention south. Death of a great leader. Let's see what this is. Our official, Mori Bakorab, has passed away at the age of 107. Alright, let's hold a small commemoration. Great. Let's see. If I go to planets and sectors... Was this person serving on the government? This was our Tribune of Rights. I cannot... 
see which planet they were necessarily governing, but we can go ahead and appoint Burr Baskorak, age 44, to the new position. All right. We'll go ahead and move our construction ship here as well. We're too above our starbase capacity, but I am also aware that when we grant away all of these systems, we will lose two, uh, three star bases, so we'll be down to nine of ten, and we're gonna want to build some extra star bases. Our first star base is gonna be, uh, our first two star bases, I should say, are gonna be around these L gate systems because very dangerous things may potentially come out of those L gate systems, and we want to be ready for them when that happens. Um, let's go ahead and sell a bunch of consumer goods, and let's buy a bunch of alloys because um, we're gonna need the alloys to fund our new fleets. We might even get a third fleet if we can end up affording it. Let's take this last supremacy perk. This is gonna up our command limit by 20 more, and it's gonna give our commanders a starting skill level of plus one. I think that brings us to level four commanders straight off the recruitment. That's fantastic. Um, let's see, what is the finisher effect? Adopting all supremacy traditions will give us war doctrine policies. Okay, let's pick an Ascension perk and let's go check out what those policies are. Um, as far as Ascension perks, um, one that I haven't taken this playthrough that I really like to get in a lot of playthroughs is Mastery of Nature. I don't like managing a million different planets. I prefer to have, you know, a decent amount like this and just trying to make the most out of the few planets that I do directly control. And this is going to help us do that by increasing our max districts to plus two on each of those planets. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this Ascension perk. I think it's pretty critical. Um, and we have a lot of planets where we can go ahead and take this new planetary decision to um, increase the number of districts. So let's go ahead and do that. Mastery of Nature. I think it's costing us 100 influence each. Decisions. Yeah, we're up on our district limits on all of these planets here. So we're going to want to increase our maximum districts by two. We don't need to do it on this planet. We don't need to do it on this planet. We could do it on this planet. How are we doing on influence? We're gonna have to hold off for a little while. We have an idle leader. We have a commander not assigned to anything. This is our army general. Hmm, odd that this person wasn't assigned to the uh, army. Do we have any other idle leaders? Ah, our master crafter. Why don't we go ahead and assign them to one of our planets? One of our important planets. Agenda available. Probably, um... Droitandir would be a decent choice. Get those consumer goods, make sure they're secure. Alright, do we have our fleets ready to arrive and um, update? Yeah, they should be uh, arriving at the shipyards in uh, due time. I think we sent this uh, construction ship over to build some new hyper relays as well. Um, this is going to be good. We should have a hyper relay ranging from Ragunov up here through Yubalon, then across to Jorowar, Perseus, Sidar, Fawe, and leading to Fevnor right now. We're extending that to go um, up through the Galactic Council. All right, we are not on the Galactic Council. Let's see who's on it. Molinox centralized commonalities, if I believe. Yeah, okay, that's these guys right up here. They're not too distant from us, so they're pretty powerful, it seems like. Um, United Iranian Block. Do I see that anywhere? Ah, that's right here. Okay, they don't seem that powerful. I'm surprised they got elected to the Council, but okay. I guess their um, diplomatic weight is coming from other sources rather than territory and planets. And the Alvanian Trade Commission? Here they are. Okay. Again, not that large in terms of territory, so they must have other things going for them to increase their diplomatic weight. Maybe one day we will get elected to the council, but for the time being, we are not. And that is okay. Any other resolutions we can um, vote on? We really want to just oppose all things. We can abstain from relocate the galactic market. We don't really care where the galactic market is. It's probably not going to be on one of our planets, so it doesn't really make a difference to us. Alright. 
Our ship has arrived in Ragunath, so let's go ahead and upgrade fleet. Um, looks like our archaeological site has triggered Hidden Worlds. Right, this was like a crashed starship that we uncovered on one of our planets. Our engineers have restored the Oracle's nexus to an operative state, but not without first disabling its defense system. Evidence suggests that it may have been responsible for not only keeping the station's inhabitants alive, but also for killing them. It ran complex computational models that forecast their lives with an estimated accuracy of 75%, correcting the divergences and incapacitating future troublemakers before they could disrupt divine order. It is indicated that it wishes to speak with us. Yikes, man. This sounds pretty dystopian. This sounds like the giver. All right, we, we got to talk to it. This is interesting. All right, looks like we're going to establish communications. Oracle. The Oracle manifests as an elaborate 3D hologram of a tall arthropoid female with wings that settle around her form as flowing robes. She bows her head in greeting and then stares emptily ahead with hundreds of huge orbed unseeing eyes. They glow dimly in the gloom as she speaks. Welcome to Divinity Station, friends. I cannot help but notice that you have disabled my security system. May I implore you to restore it immediately. I can assure you that it is there only for your protection. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're happy without the security system on. What happened to the inhabitants of the station? I have a failsafe that requires me to terminate a trial in the event of a code 034N deviation. The research had become a threat to the Republic. So it just terminated the trial the trial of what okay what is a code 034 n deviation the test subjects had developed free will free will can only be abolished with nerve gas oh my gosh wow this thing is evil okay what are you i am oracle an artificial intelligence gifted with the sight my software allows me to predict your future with a divine accuracy of 74.99999%. I sense a great doubt in you, great danger ahead. Your society is riddled with crime and deviation. I can make your pain go away. Maybe you can make some pain go away, but it seems like this thing is inflicting a lot of other forms of pain. What trial? My trial. I was designed to build and maintain a society free of crime and suffering. A utopia in which every citizen was instilled with divine purpose and lived up to their full potential, unfettered by indecision and desire. What a morbid, you know, experiment. They're playing with people's lives here. The Republic is behind this? What's the Republic? The Republic is no more. I guess it doesn't matter. We could use your recite. Uh, no way. I don't want this thing anywhere near our, our citizens. Yeah, we'll scrap it. This thing is evil. <laughs> it wants us to second guess our decision? Wait, please don't go. My prediction models show that without my aid, your civilization is headed for imminent collapse in the next 5,348 years and 297 days. I will take good care of you. My programming guarantees you. No, no way. Go away. We, do, we don't want anything to do with that. That thing is pure evil. The Albanian Trade Commission declared an emergency measure. All right. Democratic ruler elections. Looks like our current commissary general is slated to win the re-election. Looks like we can probably breach the shroud. Let's try this. Let's see where it leads to. We can reach out to a higher power. Have we had this option before? I don't remember. This costs us double the energy and 500's row. So it must be better. We know that there are vast powers out there. While we usually go unnoticed, we could try to reach out by tapping into the powers of Zero. All over the Shroud, the influence of these entities is felt by our telepaths. Which one should we seek out? Let's try Whispers of Longing and Possession. These all sound really cool and also really dangerous. This one seems like slightly less dangerous. Longing and Possession, I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfectly pleasant, but okay. There is a presence here occupying the entire part of the shroud. We have met spirits before, but this is something else, something vastly more powerful, something far more ancient. It seems unaware of us of us as of yet. Perhaps it is sleeping. 
Perhaps we are simply beneath its notice. Perhaps we should leave. Okay, we gotta attempt. Medium probability of success? I like our chances. Attempt communication. Uh, communication. As we reach out for the presence, we can feel it stirring. Its attention is now fully on us. It does not seem to appreciate being disturbed. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. An enormous wave of psionic energy crashes against us, blacking out the senses of our telepaths. When they come to, they notice that one of their number is missing. Gori Baskorak is nowhere to be found, and where she was, standing, there is now only a psionic trace of a small rift, as though the entity reached out into our world and dragged her into the shroud for... Well, who knows for what reason or purpose, really. No matter what its reasons for taking her, it seems doubtful that we will ever see Gari Baskorak again. Oh no! This is one of our officials. What was this official doing? Was this one of our, um... Was that our president? I think that was our president. Our System president's empty. Complete. Oh my gosh. We have a new society research. You can take auto curating vault. What does this do? This is an empire limit of one. It produces a bunch of unity and amenities. It gives us an um, empire modifier of monthly unity plus 5%. That's pretty good. You could also get bioreactor. This produces energy from our farmers. That's an interesting use of farmers. I don't think we have enough farmers to sacrifice our food output for energy. I think we're going to forego this. We could take telepathy for more powerful armies. Or we could get tile blockers. Let's get tile blockers. We have a lot of um, planets that we really need to get the maximum number of districts from. Um, speaking of planets, are we up at our district limit for any other planets? Looks like we're nearly there from this planet. Did we already take... Yeah, we already took the decision there. How about Corim? We might as well take Mastery of Nature on all of our planets. This one, we don't really need to do it yet. This one, we don't really need to do it yet. Um, we need more jobs on Fortalia. This is our Agri world, so we might as well unlock one more building slot and then build one more farming district. All right. We also need jobs on Favaria. Why don't we... We probably should build mining districts, to be honest. Yeah. How's our mining world doing? This is our mining world. This gives us max resource districts plus 50%. I think this will let us build more ships mining districts upgraded. here. All right, ships upgraded. So we can go ahead and reinforce fleet. Um, have we taken the moment to actually... I think we increased our naval capacity by 20. Yeah, we did. So we can get one extra um, energy artillery and kinetic artillery battleship. And that leaves us with four command limit in each um, fleet. We could probably get an extra gunship as well. I think that's going to be good. Yeah. That leaves us with two extra command limit. We can get an extra destroyer. There we go. 170 out of 170. All right, we'll go ahead and reinforce fleet. This one is not ready for that yet. Open council position. We need a new tribune of rights. We could take a new official. This person reduces crime. I think that's going to be a good, valuable governor to have. I think we're going to just keep taking the crime reduction. We can put this person on newly conquered um, worlds. Looks like uh, the state of Panaxala is currently surve surveying the system. So hopefully they'll claim it soon and we'll be able to uh, start giving away some, some of these systems. Research How are we doing with our upgrades here? Decent. All right, we upgraded that. We can get ancient refinery. Ooh, this improves our exotic gases, rare crystals and volatile moats. Planet limit plus one. We get ancient saturator artillery, an X slot weapon. Oh, I'm torn. 
We don't have X slot weapons unlocked yet, so I think we take the ancient un refinery. I don't know how to unlock X slot weapons. It may be the case that in order to unlock that um, type of weapon on our ships, we just need to research ships one of the X slot weapons, and then it'll unlock the ability to build ships with them. I don't know. We will find out. Alright, Fortalia. Looks like we can upgrade this. We can build... Realistically, probably a new research labs. We build more chemical plants. System survey complete. I don't think we need to do that. What's this? The enigmatic cache? The enigmatic cache is in uh, Benus. It looks like it's heading over east. Interesting. Molinarch centralized commonalities declared war on the Mythfell Obliterators? Alright, we're gearing up for war with the Mythfell Obliterators. This might help us. If they're distracted uh, fighting a war over to their east, they might be relatively undefended over here. We can take advantage of that. Um, now I want to be careful not to declare war too preemptively. Um, keeping in mind that spaceborne life form encountered. Um, we can't grant away any territory if we're at war. So I want to grant away the rest of this territory first and then declare war. We're at 12 of 12 starbase capacity. When did we go down a starbase? I thought we were above. Or maybe we just increased our capacity? I don't remember doing that. We can take a new science physics research. So give us, I think maybe it's finally time to unlock cloaking abilities. Yeah, cloaking might be good for us in the future. Our mining world, ah. We have a lack of housing and jobs on this world. No worries, we will rectify that with some city districts. And I think we got our two gas extraction wells, so what are we producing a lot of? Producing, we need some more crystal plants to be honest. Okay. There we go. Gruner Prime. Looks like we can build a whole bunch of more mining districts on this planet. I think we're just going to max out on mining districts if we can. Alright, for our last tradition... Oh, we'll pick our last tradition in just a second. Death of a great leader. Our commander died. A small commemoration will suffice. Um, for our last tradition, I was thinking of taking unyielding. Um, a lot of these don't really make sense for us at this point. Aptitudes is not that good. Adaptability is just not that good. We're not really doing too much in terms of diplomacy. Um, domination doesn't seem right for an egalitarian republic. Statecraft is honestly kind of boring. I honestly think the best is unyielding. This is going to improve the strength of our star bases and crucially increase our star base capacity. Um, I don't know what the end game crisis has in store for us, but we're going to make sure we're prepared with lots of star bases and fully, you know, kitted out star bases. So let's go ahead and take unyielding. Already, that increased our star base capacity by two. So let's go ahead and build two more star bases around our Elgate systems. I'd like to get one around all of our planet systems as well. So once I grant away all of this territory and I have more starbase capacity, I'll go ahead and build them probably Gruner, Borbagon, and Jaltham are the last three planet systems that need it. Might be worth getting some like defensive um, points in and around here as well. We'll see. Available leader traits are Commissary General. Hmm. We can give uh, Charisma to our current Commissary General. Speaking of, didn't one of our governors die? Yeah, I think we can assign a new governor. Let's hire on a new governor. I want to keep our crime governor for newly conquered 
territories. Income Reducing crime is going to be really important for that to increase stability. Um, why don't we just take this 35 year old lead a lifespan plus 10 years? That's going to be fine. Migration treaty with the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor? No way. We do not like the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor. Corim. Corim needs more jobs. All right. Let's go ahead and upgrade the alloy foundries. And let's build a couple more industrial districts. Construction complete. All right. Construction complete. Starbase construction. construction. Complete. Ah. Let's go ahead and continue upgrading these two. How are our fleets doing? Looks like we can upgrade all of our fleets. Might as well. I think that was the new generator or power reactor that we unlocked. So it's not really going to make our our fleets um, objectively, you know, better. But hey, we'll take we'll take new better reactors. This is one of our scientists who's governing Favaria. Let's give them celebrity level two. Increase their amenities. Sure. This is our scientist governing new Favaria. We can give Homesetter. Yeah, it's just gonna increase food from farmers, which I think we're doing a lot of on new Favaria. I wouldn't say a lot of, but we're doing some. Sure, we'll build a couple more agriculture districts here. Really take take use of that. Looks like they're finally um, building a starbase. Once they build this, we will grant away this territory and we will declare war on the Mythfell Obliterators. You know what? To gear up for this. 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Ships upgraded. 100%. Ships upgraded. Let's go ahead and move into Paya and get ready to fight on this front. And um, we'll also be ready to fight from Sismok as well. Alright, how is this starbase doing? Almost there. We have a council position to fill. Our Minister of Defense. Interesting. Which of our fleets now is lacking a commander? Our MSI warship is lacking a commander. Alright, we can get counselor traits probably for this. I say we take ships, weapons, damage, and sublight speed plus 10%. That's really good. And let's assign this person as our Minister of Defense. It's a new hire. Um, we can also take hostility. Yeah. I prefer the ship's uh, the sub light speed. We can take uh, Admiral as well. All right, so now that they built that um, space station, let's go ahead and form a commercial pack and a research agreement. And um, let's offer a trade deal. Let's transfer system. And we don't want the Singularity, we want Zandabon. Let's give them Zandabon. Alright, we can research... Lots of good options here. Hmm... I say we take Psionic Army, finally. This is gonna increase the effectiveness of our army. Gearing up for war, that's going to be a good idea. Alright, let's continue offering trade deals here. We can offer them... Fear of Mathrios and Xeris. I wish there was a more effective way to do this rather than offering them like one or two at a time. Um, offer trade deal, transfer system, Chiselion. There you go. Happy birthday. Offer trade deal, transfer system, yawn. And then we can give them Stevens. And there we go. These are borders I'm happy with. They can claim the rest of this for themselves. And we're going to hold on to this, maybe put a defensive station in Corolla or Durellis. Yeah, I think this is good. We have unlocked cloaking. We can get plasma cannon. I think this is level three plasma. Plasma throwers. 
We don't have any wormholes. Yeah, let's take plasma cannons. It's gonna be interesting. All right, fantastic. Let's declare war. I think we're ready. End threat. We have declared war. All right. For the last five minutes or so of this episode, we will start this war. Let's move into Federation's end. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on to slow speed. And, uh, come on, deck collectors, seriously? Spaceport Don't interrupt us. I'm going to set the order to follow this fleet with our cinematic camera. And we can really appreciate the new size of our, our fleets. We have, these are pretty large fleets now. This looks like a formidable force. I wouldn't want to be going up toe-to-toe -to -toe against these guys. Gearing up for um, hyperlane travel. Here we go. We're attacking the starbase. Oops. There we go, it's the deck collectors. They interrupted our cinematic experience. So we can see these are our um, carrier battleships. We can see our kinetic artillery. We can see our cruisers coming in. These are our gunship cruisers, I, I believe. Here should be some more destroyers. No, I think these are cruisers. Yeah, gunship cruisers. Here are our destroyers and corvettes. I mean, wow. I don't think this starbase even stood a chance. This is an impressive fleet we have. I think we're getting lots of notifications. All right, we've taken the system. Council agenda ready. We're establishing communication with the pre-FTLs here. We are more alike than you realize. All right, fantastic. Council agenda ready. We can get extra pop happiness. We can give ourselves a, bon a bonus to unity. Impenetrable border. Starbase hole points, upgrade cost. That's boring. We don't need mind over matter. We're researching telepathy right now. Yeah, why don't we just take the bonus to our unity? That'll be good. Um, let's move our fleet in. Did we take any casualties there? No, we did not. Fantastic. Here, let's move in to um, these systems and let's try to take some of this territory. Oh, we're down to 11 of 13 starbase capacity, so I think we can upgrade, upgrade, and upgrade. There we go. How are we doing on our hyper relay system? Hostile station engaged. It might be worth building a hyper relay in Sasara and Unamar as well. So we can get straight to the border and in Waltham. Okay, we can take it off of slow. We don't need to be on slow speed anymore. Though I think for the remainder of the war, we're gonna remain on normal speed. Cause I don't wanna rush by the war too quickly and let the enemy sneak up on us or anything bad. Um, let me go into species and let's find Mythfell and let's set rights so that they have migration controls enabled. This way they're not going to be migrating onto our planets and they'll just stay put on their planets. Let's also go into government. I think we had war doctrines that we unlocked. Let's see what these are. Home territory fire rate. That's good if we're in a defensive war. That's not going to be really helpful to us right now in our offensive war. Hit and run. Disengagement opportunities plus two. Disengagement chance plus 33%. This is really good for survivability. Rapid deployment gives us plus sublight speed and ship's weapon range. Oh, that's so good. No retreat. Really bad for survivability, but makes our ships a lot more tankier. Or I guess not tankier, but they're dealing more damage. 
I'm gonna say we stick with rapid deployment. This seems really good. Second thing I wanted to do was um, land appropriation prohibited. This way when we conquer a new planet, we don't take a bunch of our population and um, migrate them to the new planet. With that in mind, let's move our army in and um, let's take Federation's end. Richie's Roost. Alright, let's go ahead and stay in this black hole system. Let's actually move to this starbase and repair. Council agenda available. All right, technology research. We have better thrusters now. Ooh, that's going to be good to upgrade our ships with. Get metallurgist output plus 10%. We're not doing too bad on alloys for now. I'd like to get better torpedoes. Yeah, let's get better torpedoes. Planetary invasion begun. Incoming transmission. Pesci embraces cybernetics. All right, interesting. Migration treaty? No, thank you. All right, looks like the state of Panaxala is already starting the offensive. Great. It's exactly what we want. I think we'll let the state of Panaxala expand a little bit into this territory, and we will carve out a new state from this territory up here. Hostile station engaged. All right. Are we all repaired here? I think we are. Let's go ahead and let's move in. And um, I say we move this way. Spaceborne life form encountered. Bunch of new star bases have been constructed. Let's upgrade them all. Yeah, I'd like to have fully upgraded uh, star bases and all of these systems. Hopefully this isn't going to be too expensive in terms of our alloys. I mean, it, it is going to be expensive. I have no doubts about that. I just mean, hopefully we can afford it. All right, here we are, taking a bunch of new systems. Good, they're moving in an army as well. Hopefully this army will be able to take that planet. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and continue um, conquering Hostile territory. Low stability on Federation's end? That's fine. We have a governor just for this. This was our Tribune of Rights? Yeah. It's going to reduce crime, increase stability. All right. Fantastic. Let's uh, choose the habitat because this is going to increase stability and amenities for us. All right, great. Hostile station engaged. All right, this war is off to a great start. I think this is actually probably going to be a good stopping point for our episode. Um, we have done a lot of really great work here. We have successfully um, granted over our territory to the state of Panaxala. We have built a plethora of new star bases, especially in our Elgate systems. We have refitted our fleet. Our fleet is now more powerful than ever. I think it's probably one of the most powerful in the galaxy, I dare say. Um, and our war against the Mythville Obliterators is going great. We have yet to see their fleet. I'm hoping their fleet is caught up and engaged with the Monarch Centralized Commonalities and we won't see them for a little while yet. Um, but yeah, things are going well. Um, in the next episode, hopefully we can um, wrap up this war with the Mythville Obliterators and move our attention down south and extend the reach of the Sandarin United Planet States. Conquer some territory from the Alliance, conquer the rest of the Sandarin Authority territory, and grant all that territory to our um, vassal state. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and please stay tuned for the next episode. I'll see you guys next time.